Mr. Speaker, this health minister has sure made a mess of things. He's got big trust issues with doctors right now that we've all heard about. And he's about to take on another critical component of frontline health care delivery and wreck that too. Earlier char changes to the way pharmacies are paid for dispensing medications have already threatened many small independent pharmacies. No, but the Allison. new changes threaten the big chain drugstores too. Will the minister commit today to halt his destructive plans and actually listen to what the pharmacists are telling him? Well, Mr. Speaker, what the uh, pharmacists of Alberta are telling us is that they very much like uh, the idea of being treated as full partners and, and paid as professionals in our health care system. Mr. Speaker, this government last year implemented, implemented a pharmacy services framework that pays uh, pharmacists to provide services to Albertans, like renewing prescriptions, like developing care plans, plans as part of a primary health care team, and like uh, managing complex medication issues for patients. Mr. Speaker, the way forward for pharmacists, and we're working with them, is to treat them as full partners in the team, much more than they could expect Thank under the official Honourable opposition. Honourable Leader. Mr. Speaker, this health minister just is not listening to what pharmacists are saying. Right. Drug stores, regardless of size, have significant inventories of, it, of medications on hand. The minister's ill-conceived plan announced in the budget will force pharmacies to sell medications at a fraction of what they paid for them, meaning that they will have to absorb hundreds of thousands of dollars, even millions of dollars worth of losses. Why is the minister intent on wrecking this important component of frontline health care services? Well, well, Mr. Speaker, we welcome the question because, quite frankly, we've been waiting for the opposition to stand up and make an argument as to why Albertans, the government programs that we provide, employers that employ Albertans and provide benefit plans, and people out of their own pocket should pay more than the best price we can get for generic drugs in this province. And now she's made that argument, Mr. Speaker. The fact of the matter is that this government has poured over $95 million into transitional funding over the last four years to support pharmacists moving to a new professional services framework. We have a Implementation Advisory Committee, Mr. Speaker, what, that we're working with now on the latest generic price reduction. Thank you, Minister. Our leader. Let me make this clear for the Minister, Mr. Speaker. The effect on customers, patients, and care providers of this draconian proposal is going to be devastating. Pharmacies will close. Drug shortages will increase. Exactly. Prescription service for seniors and long-term care patients will suffer. It is a pretty grim legacy because the minister won't listen to the pharmacists. How many more mistakes, blunders, foul-ups will we have to endure from this minister? Yeah. Well. Once again, Mr. Speaker, the, uh, the rather uh, uh, startling rhetoric from the Leader of the Opposition belies her lack of understanding of the basic economics that underlie the situation. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker the, evidence, the evidence in Ontario, for example, Mr. Speaker, where generic drug prices have been reduced is that the number of pharmacies has actually increased. The evidence, Mr. Speaker, is that when we pay pharmacists to provide the services they are trained to provide and they are regulated to provide by their own college, is that patient uh, safety, patient quality, and uh, team-based care delivery prospers, Mr. Speaker. Those are the economics.